I'm going to show California investors where they can go to pick up the cheapest real estate in the USA. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the MLS Search and Analysis Show. I'm James Wise, and I'm showing you guys where to get the cheapest real estate, man. People are always Googling cheap real estate for sale, dude. That's one of the freaking hot keywords, right? People are always looking for cheap shit. Well, I know where it is. I specialize in cheap shit, okay? I've sold over $200 million worth of cheap-ass real estate, man. So if, if you want to learn how to invest in cheap-ass real estate, I'm your guy. But guess what? You better buckle the fuck in, motherfucker, because this cheap real estate stuff, like, it's not all fucking sunshine and rainbows, dude. It's not fucking the beautiful family with 2.5 kids, the white picket fence, and the fucking puppy dog. No, no. Owning cheap real estate. Sometimes it feels like a battle, right? Sometimes it feels like a battle. I show you the bad stuff here on Holton Wise TV. Check out the Tenants from Hell show. That's about as wor the worst of the worst, right? That's as rough as it can get, right? But that doesn't mean it's always rough. No, it's not always rough, okay? Most of the time, it's pretty friggin' lucrative. But I don't want anybody coming here trying to anticipate it's all sunshine and rainbows. No. I think it's very important that I break these assets, these investments down for you guys in an easy-to-understand way. Especially when I'm working with people who are not local to my market. Like Horatio, my California-based investor, who this video is for. Horatio, brother? We've been looking at some multifamilies. I wanted to hit you with some single families. You said, hey, I'm interested in single families if the numbers make sense, right? So I know your goal is to stretch your funds as far as you possibly can. That's what I want to do for you. But I'm only going to do so if I can provide you an incredibly transparent look into these properties. That's why customers keep coming back to Holton Wise because we don't do the bait and switch, man. We tell you what it's going to be like how much it's going to cost, and how much we charge for our assistance to help you, right? That's what we do. That's why people come back to us. We shoot you straight. And I'm going to shoot you straight on the numbers on this low-income property right after this. <laughs> Welcome back. Let's break down the numbers of this ultra-cheap property, man. Super friggin' cheap, folks. You really can't get cheaper real estate than this anywhere else in the world, man. Well, I shouldn't say world. Anywhere else in the United States. I don't I don't know what real estate is going for in like Baghdad. I'm not sure. I've never looked into it. 7410 to Bill Ave, Cleveland, 4 for 102. Been on the market 44 days, priced at 49.9. Why? If it's so freaking cheap has it been on the market for 44 days? Two reasons. There's two kind of buyers out there, people that want to live in the house, people that want to collect cash flow, people like you. Well, guess what? This property's got a tenant in there, so anybody that wants to live in this house, not interested. That leaves cash flow investors, people like you. A lot of people are passing over this property because of what we got right here. Current tenant has been there seven years paying six fifty dollars a month. That's stupid cheap. Stupid. This neighborhood, 1000 bucks a month is what it should go for. So a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want a freaking $650 rental. I want a $1,000 rental. Well, this is a $1,000 rental. How this particular landlord has chosen to operate his or her business over the last seven years, it's irrelevant to you, right? You need to focus on this property's potential over the long haul. What is replicable? What is consistent? What is your ownership experience likely to be like? That's what makes sense. And I don't just talk about that when the rent is lower than the market rent. If this dude was renting this to some asshole for $1,300 a month, I'd tell you the same thing. I'd say let's focus on the long-term projections here, right? Because I know $1,300 is not replicable, right? Sometimes, and this, this really throws off new, new real estate investors, Sometimes, folks, you can convince tenants to pay above market rent, right? Guess what? They usually do it once, right? This is what happens. A lot of times, maybe the market rent's 1000 You convince some fucking asshole to pay you 1300 
That person that's paying you thirteen hundred, they're not stupid, bro. They're not just like in love with your house so much that they're willing to overpay for it. No. Typically what happens in that situation is that person, they know that they can't rent anywhere else. They got bad credit. They got evictions, this or that. They got problems, felonies, right? So they look for a landlord who doesn't know what's going on, charging too much. And you being a greedy asshole that you are, see that this property is really only renting for 1000 but you got some fucker to pay 1300 So you put blinders on, your greed blinders, and then you do a deal. You, you put a tenant in your house you really shouldn't have put in your house. And guess what? That fucking tenant stops paying rent and you evict that tenant, okay? I've seen it time and time again, right? So when the rent's too low, don't go, ah, it's a bad investment. When the rent's too high, don't go, oh, it's a great investment. It's still the same fucking house, man. This house right here, look. This is the house, okay? This is the same fucking house. If we got a tenant in there at 650 right now, or if we had some tenant in there at 1300 same house. You're not going to be dealing with that one particular tenant throughout the majority of your ownership experience. No, you're going to be dealing with the neighborhood, dealing with the tenant base, dealing with Holton Wise as your property manager. And we are going to tell you, present to you what we see under properties like this. And this is very much low-income investing, by the way, right? So if you guys are out there searching the internet and you're looking for the cheapest real estate in the world, I hope you don't expect it to look like the Taj Mahal. This uh, is dated, seven-year tenant, but this is what I would anticipate a friggin' $650 rental looks like, right, with the seven-year seven, seven tenant. But by the way, this is this is great. This is brand new. That's awesome. These things last 30 years, folks, furnaces. 30 years is what they last. They cost about three Gs. This looks like in its first couple years of ownership. Right here, you can barely see it, but this is a nice, shiny hot water tank, right? That looks to be fairly new, too. I actually think they talked about it in their description. Let me check that out. Most major mechanicals have been replaced. Plastic plumbing and drains, breaker box, furnace, approximately seven years old. So it's got 23 years of life left in it. Aluminum-sided house with concrete front porch. Tenants have been there over seven years paying 650 would like to stay. Now, obviously, they want to stay, right, because they're only paying 650 But uh, just finishing off the pictures, right? Updated electrical. That's great. This is what it is. It's low-income investing, right? $1,000 a month rental. At $1,000 a month, what's that look like? Okay, that looks like approximately six grand for NOI. Approximately five thousand nine hundred thirty-five a year would be your cost, and that is me calculating things like repairs, maintenance, capital expenditures, vacancy. Right now, as far as the price point, they're asking forty-nine nine. I'd like to try to pick it up at forty-five. If we pick it up at forty-five, we're right there by that ten thousand dollars. We'd only need eleven and a quarter. Bank kicks in thirty-three and three quarters, and if you got that tenant up. To that price of a thousand, that's thirty-nine percent cash on cash return or fourteen cap. Now, before everybody's like, "Sweet, thirty-nine percent return." Hold on, <laughs> we ain't there yet, dude. We still got a ten of paying six fifty, right? Now, do I think we can get that tenant at six fifty up to a thousand without turning them over? Maybe. Do I think we could do it right after you buy it? No, no. If you buy it. And you're like, hey, Mr. Tenant, I'm your new landlord, rents a thousand. They're gonna move out, right? I mean, that's just gonna happen. They're gonna move out. Do they wanna stay there forever at six fifty? Sure. You can't do that either, though. That doesn't make any sense, right? So you gotta get some middle ground with these folks, right? What I like to do is either keep their rent the same for just one year and then go up fifty, hundred, something like that, or uh, do a very, very small one at the first year though. I do like to get them in there after the first year though at the same rent, because I want that paper trail, right? Trying to evict people when there's no written lease, it's a fucking pain in the ass. Does it work? Yeah, we will still get them out, but your eviction's going to cost more money. They're more likely to be granted a continuance, court mediation. It's it's a mess. You really, the leases are there to protect everybody, but the leases are usually weighted in the favor of the landlord, okay? I mean, think about it. Who writes the lease, right? We do, okay? So we really want to get them on a lease. So I'd like to do one year lease at 650, and then after that, Let's go up to 750. Then we'll try 850, right? And we'll try to keep them in there as long as we can. Because you saw the pictures. That don't look nice, right? If these folks move out, we'll get a $1,000 tenant to move right back in. But it ain't going to be uh, like that. No, we're going to have to spend at least fifteen grand making the house look nice, getting it ready for Section 8. So that's why the smartest play here is to slowly increase their rent, right? You ain't going to make 
or break your investment by only increasing the rent like a hundred bucks versus going to market rent, right? Like if you have a, a unit that's only like a hundred or a couple hundred bucks lower than your market rent, right? That's not the end of the world. What you really don't want to do is, is push out a paying tenant just so you could drop another 20K into the investment, right? That doesn't make any sense, right? Slowly work them up, slowly work up the ROI numbers over time while you're spending your money on acquiring other assets. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.